sure it's been a fine, fine day, Lyman. I didn't expect anything like this when I rode in the river down this morning. You're not trying to tell me that you gotta go already, are you? Afraid so. Mr. Cartwright wants us back to the herd come dark. That's two whole hours away. Seventeen, black and not. No one. Hot! Ah! Go! We lost again. That's the hungriest roulette wheel I ever saw. I drove first. Come on, Loopy. We need a drink. Back down, gentlemen. Two bears, buddy. All right, shawty. <laughs> Gonna have to be a roundup in here before we go anyplace. How about it, Loopy? Well, one roll. Low man buys the drinks. Go ahead. I gotta get lucky sometime, shorty. <laughs> Seems more like a lifetime since we left Clearwater. It all came back today, didn't it? The barn dances, the band concerts. Hey, why the tears? It's awful nice to, to say hello to an old friend. Not so nice to say goodbye. You still can't lie with a hoot. Come on, what's the matter? Candy, do me a favor. Sure. Just ride on out of here. Do you hear me? No, not till you tell me. Six hundred head. All right, boys, let's find our horses and get back to the camp. Come on, let's move. I thought these fellas might put some fresh money in the sheriff's till. Now I'm sure of it. Come on, fellas, come on, come on. Where's Candy? He's inside talking to a girl. He'll be out in a minute. Mister, we run an open town here, but we don't like trail hands coming in and trying to take it apart. Well, I'm sorry about that. You're right, Sheriff. Of course, I'm taking them right back to camp. Well, those are you men. Yeah? Then you're the one who pays the bill. Now, there's no charge for scaring the citizens because they're getting used to it by now. But that lamp and that water trough your man shot up will have to be paid for. Sheriff, you're right. How much? I figure about $30. <laughs> $30? That lamp chimney should be worth about 25 cents. As far as that trough is concerned, it wouldn't plug in a hammer picks up that leak. $30 or somebody goes to jail. Then with bail and cost, board and all that, it'll pile up fast. Come back any time. I'm afraid your prices are a little high. Then you better be sure you take all your men with you. Because any I find sleeping or drunk are going to jail. Shed a few happy tears. Get out. Candy, come on. We're moving on. I'm staying here, Joe. No, Candy, please. If you want to do me a favor, ask your pa to give me my pay. 
Well, here he comes. You ask him yourself. Let's, uh, let's move up. We got hurry to move up the trail. If you two can carry yourself. Mr. Carrain, I'm staying here. Yeah. Andy, we got a sheriff who'd like us to move out. I met an old friend, Lila Holden. She needs some help. No! He's mistaken, Mr. Cartwright. I don't need any help from anyone. It's not that I'm leaving you shorthanded. You got more drovers than you need. That's not the point, Ken. I'm trying to tell you something. The sheriff would like us all to move out. Agreement when I hired on, Mr. Cartwright. And I can quit any time. You can send me down the road any time, right? True enough, but you just heard the young lady say she didn't need any help. Mr. Cartwright, please, my pay. You want your pay here, right now? That's right. You didn't tell us you had any friends here in town. I didn't know it till I rode in. You sure? Sure. Thank you. Good luck. And uh, don't get into any trouble. It's a rough town. Sold him? Take it easy. Well, girl he hasn't seen in a long time. Strange town. I think Candy's asking for trouble. You mean he ain't going with us? Well, I'll tell you about it later. Of course, I must say, if she looked at me like she was looking at him, I think it'd take about 40 horses to pull me out of here. <laughs> All right, let's go. Well, let's get back. Uh, how are we going to do that? What you better? Uh, red. Me too. Well, now we'll bet on the black. Let's go get it. All right, at least tell me this much. Do you want to stay in Riverbend, or do you want to leave? Oh, Candy, I want to leave this town more than anything in the whole wide world. Then why don't you? Stages come and go every day. Odd. House wins again. Oh, money. It must be money. How much do you need? It would take at least $50. Thirty. Two. Two. I'm 18 short. No, Candy, I don't want to take your money. Look, just forget it. If you left right now, you could catch up with Mr. Cartwright, and I'm sure he'd give you your job back. There's a money stretcher over there. Now, you wait for me right here, and I'm gonna make 50, 60 out of this and we'll hurry. No, Candy, whatever you do, don't. Twenty-seven red, even. No winners. Hey, Candy. 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 Black. 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 Come on. Come on. Well, red and even. No winners. House wins again. Listen. Let's let's switch back to red. No. Black. Candy's betting black. Hello. All right. All bets down? Wheels rigged. Wait a minute, buddy. All right, boys, let's get our money back.
Come here. He spent a day talking to this one. Who is he? Oh, Candy, just another drover. Not another one of your friends. You're not trying that again. Oh, no, Claude, of course not. Well, get out of sight and stay out until I tell you different. All right, on your feet. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on, you two. Kind of got a little delayed, Mr. Cartwright. 600 head of cattle to move and you get delayed. Yes, sir. We was coming right back, but Loopy sort of got pinned down. Well, not exactly pinned down. Uh, I mean, knocked down. It was purely terrible, Mr. Cartwright. It was a crooked wheel. And Candy got annoyed. I never, never seen the likes of it, Mr. Cartwright. Candy and me and Loopy snatching at the money they stole with, with that crooked wheel. And the sheriff pounding Candy. <laughs> and Candy <laughs> hammering him to a pulp. And, and then knocking him around that saloon. Just... Hammering him and hammering him. <laughs> what happened, Candy? The deputy knocked him over the head with his gun butt. With his gun butt? How you like that? After all that pretty fighting. You had a bit of trouble here. You might say that. Yeah, that's quite a herd of beef you're moving. Horn tells me about 600 head. You uh, keep a pretty close check, mister. Booker, Claude Booker. And we like to know where we stand. We don't set the tariff on problems like these unless we know a man can pay for them. You've got two of my men in jail here. What's the bail? Well, the bail's set at $100. Damage to town property is 200 more. It's a bit steep, isn't it? If you think so, go take a look at that saloon they wrecked. Right, now, this only pays for the one called Loopy. There's, there's no bail set on the other one. What do you mean, Candy? That's quite a name he has. Maybe he won't be so sweet time we get through with him. Get back to the herd. Mr. Cartwright, get back to the herd. All right. Now, since when do you keep a man in jail without bail for breaking up a saloon? Whenever I feel like it. The law says I don't have to let anybody out on bail unless I figure they'll be here for the trial. That one doesn't look too dependable to me. He's a type that'd skip town and I'd have to go after him. Now, he's better off where he is. Until the trial judge gets here. 
All right. When'll that be? In two or three days. What are the charges? Charges? Mr. I got a list of them. Destruction of property, assault with intent to kill, interfering with an officer in the performance of his duty, resisting arrest. That's only the beginning. And each and every one of these charges can cost him $500 and six months in jail. Your boy's gonna be a lot older and a lot poorer before he's out there busting up another saloon. How can we see him? Help yourself. How you feeling? Pretty good. How's the other fella? Well, that's where we got a little problem. Yeah, I know. I heard him. We're trying to get you out of here, Candy, but it's going to take a little longer than we figured. Who wants out? All the comforts are home. Of course, I'm going to miss old Loopy. Candy, you're going to need a good lawyer. Well, that's uh, very kind of you, Mr. Cartwright. But uh, I don't need a lawyer. I can get out of here all by myself. Now, don't be ridiculous with a sheriff like that out there. Let's get one thing straight, Mr. Cartwright. You don't owe me any favors. I'm not asking any. I'm not giving any favors. I'm offering That's the way I want it. All right. I'm going to stand here arguing all day. Come on, we've got a herd to move. But Pa's offering you a lawyer. Now, be smart. Take him. Joe, thanks. But I don't need it. All right, sit yourself. Take it easy, buddy. See you later, Hoss. In case he wants to buy some stamps, just send a telegram. You take good care of your friends. We'll try to do the same. Unless he gets in his head to break jail. We got a way of handling that, too. A long pine box and a short reading of the scriptures. That's two dollars for holding the horse overnight, including feeding and uh, use of straw. Two dollars? Yeah. Well, uh, what if... Well, I ain't got it. I... Back in the jail. Jail? I just came. Mr. Cartwright. You hear what he said he wants? He wants two dollars just for holding my animal overnight. If you've got any objections, take it up with Sheriff Booker. The regulations is posted in his office. Prisoners are responsible for all costs in holding their property while spending time in jail. Two dollars. Here you are. Okay, get your own horse. I'm going to get myself a beer. Loopy. Get your own horse. Thanks, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright. You just bailed one of your drovers out of jail just now. Why not Candy? Well, we tried, but Sheriff Booker said no. Then you just tell him to stay right where he is. No matter what happens, he mustn't try to leave. No, don't come any closer. What do you mean, exactly? Just, just what I said. Ma'am, Candy's locked up over there behind bars. He ain't likely to go no place. Well, now, you just do what I tell you, you hear? Other men have been locked up safe in that jail and have got killed. I know. Over you get back to camp. Joe, you go with him. Over you get started. I'll catch up, Jay. I got my horse down the city. All right. No, you and I better find this Miss Holden, find out what this is all about. Yeah. Don't you think we ought to split up? Yeah. 
You go back there, Elliot. Look out of here. Yes, sir. She's holding. Oh, please let me go. We will, Miss Holden, but first we got to know a little more about those men who were killed in that jail. But I told you, all I know. Not quite, ma'am. You hadn't told us who they were. Or why they were killed, or how. But I've nothing more to say. I've nothing to say to you, nothing whatsoever. Claude, keep them away from me. Please, Claude. What are you bothering the girl about? Well, uh, Candy stayed behind in town to be with Miss Holden. We were just trying to find out how Candy was acting when he was in the saloon. You run along, Lila. How much trouble are you looking for, mister? Oh, it's Joe's. Hey, what do you want? What are you doing with my son's horse? Darn it. Two dollars a day. Feed and straw. Read the regulation. I asked you a question. Sheriff? Get your hands off him. What are you holding that horse for, Clemmy? Well, Horn told me to. He just put the owner in jail for breaking up the mirror at the Sapphire Saloon. One thing about this hotel, the guests are in no shape to pick a room when they check in. How long have I been here? 10, 15 minutes. After what happened to me, I thought you'd have enough sense to stay out of here. Yeah, staying out was easy. I was getting into it with a problem. I can understand breaking out of jail. Why would you want to break in? I keep you alive. That whack on the head must have shook you up more than I thought. It's not funny. I'm serious. You know, that uh, girl you were talking to in the salon? Isla Holden. What about her? She told me to tell you to stay put. Some other men tried to break out of here and they were killed. She was afraid the same thing might happen to you. Four hundred dollars. The four hundred is just for the damages. That boy you was running up quite a bill. Bar mirror that came all the way from San Francisco. Two tables, three chairs, seven bottles of whiskey. Now, look, you can call it damages. I call it robbery. Your privilege, as long as you pay. And suppose I refuse to pay. I'll impound a hundred head of your beef. Four hundred. Now, about the bail. Never mind about the bail. I want to talk to my son before we discuss bail. Show Mr. Cartwright the prisoner. Well, why? Well, guess you're a little surprised to find me in here, huh? Nope. I'm not surprised at anything you do anymore, Joseph. Kind of mad at me. Nope. No, I'm not mad at you. If you want to spend your time in jail here rather than help take the herd up the trail, that's your business. Oh, look, I never said... I'm not going to bail you out. <laughs> Got your comeuppance, didn't you, boy? <laughs> Better get back to camp and get the herd started. Yes, sir. Paul, do you think that sheriff really thinks you're angry with Joe? We'll have to wait and see. Who have you talked to so far? Well, uh, Corker Samuels and Bud Purdy. They're a good men. Yes, siree. Corker's been mayor of River Bend going on ten years, and there ain't a better feed and grain store anywhere than Bud Purdy's. Yeah. What'd they say about Booker? Oh, various things. 
What do you think about the man? Oh, why ask me? I, I'm just a barber. <laughs> well, from my experience, a barber shop is where most of the influential people in the community congregate. Oh, now that part's right. And Barber uh, seems to know more about the community than even the mayor. Well, I do know a little bit about what goes on in Riverbend. <laughs> but you know a whole lot of what goes on. <laughs> I've shaved him since he got the star. That's, uh, let's see, eight, uh, nine years come April. Now, he does his job. Nobody's going to argue about that. He's never been caught stealing or drinking to excess. He likes the ladies, but that's not against the rules since he ain't married. He's had to kill four men, line of duty. Four men, huh? Gunfighters? Two of them were. The others... Sure nice talking to you, Mr. Cartwright, and hearing about the ranch. Well... You come back soon. I sure will. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Hello, Sheriff. What do you have? A uh, shave. Some talker, that one. He was here for an hour, and I couldn't get a word in. Not one. Not bad. Beef stew, fresh bread, and hot coffee. You're getting the same food I get. You got my sympathy. Yeah, mine too. That stew even smells tough. Keep on. I'll make it bread and water and forget the bread. Got to turn the key. The door's unlocked. Oh, no, he didn't forget. He wants you to see it. I try to go and he kills me. Mm-hmm. You keep saying that. The man wears a star. He's been sheriff around here a long time. Why does he want to commit murder? Well, look, why don't we stop talking about it and I'll prove it. With who? Me or you? With me. Proved it. Now he's going to have to kill you, too. You're asking my opinion as an attorney? I'm also willing to pay for it. Well, that immediately sets you apart from the other citizens of Riverbend. Just, uh, what do you want to know about Sheriff Booker? Everything. <laughs> it's an order I can't begin to fill. Before Booker, Riverbend was a town torn to pieces every time a herd came up the trail. Riots, fistfights, shootings. Booker said he'd stop all that. Also, that he'd work without salary. So he uh, kept the fines. In lieu of wages. Mm. License to steal. That's been said, yes. But it is legal. Suppose there's no fighting. Well, that hasn't happened yet. There seems to be no end to uh, provocation. Female provocation. So he put the drovers in jail, threw a heavy fine at them. The trail bosses had to bail them out or else they couldn't get their herds to the railhead. Man's a thief. He stays within the law. I understand that he shot and killed two unarmed men in jail. Prisoners who were trying to escape. Sheriff Booker had to shoot. 
in self-defense. There were no witnesses. As a matter of record, no. Why don't you get rid of them? There are a lot of us who'd like to do that. But we keep telling ourselves that he does maintain law and order and that our streets are safe for our women folks at no cost to us. The truth is, Sheriff Claude Booker is a cold-blooded killer. We're afraid of him, Mr. Cartwright. And if you're wise, you will be too. Holden. Never heard of her. Lila Holden, she works in the saloon. Wrong saloon. Probably wrong town. Be smart. Right out. You're asking someplace else. Hi, Tom. Hi. Lila Holden, Empire Hotel, room 17. I'll uh, take that 10 you offered the bartender. Barbering business ain't been too good lately. I, I also do undertaking. Wouldn't surprise me if I had some to do any time now. All you did was have a drink with him. And he quit his job to help you. But I didn't need any help. I told him that. I told you that. Look, Miss Holden, you came to that livery stable. You begged us to tell Candy not to try to escape from Booker's jail. Why? Did I say that? Yes, you did. Now, why? Was it because two other men have been killed trying to get out of that jail? You were afraid that Candy would be killed, too? Is that it? Is that it? Yes. Yes, I was. Now, Miss Holden, Miss Holden, please. Why were those two men killed? Why? Because both of them were trying to help me escape from Riverbend. From Book. And Candy was going to help you too, huh? Miss mm -hmm. Holden, is there any any tie between you and? Uh, Book, I mean, legally, or... Oh, no. Except a year ago when I came here broken and hungry. He was good to me, that's all. But now, he thinks that he owns me. Twice I got on the stage and he came on and dragged me back. And yet you work with him. You entice people in so you can throw them into jail and find them. But because I have to. You have to? I, I thought it was sort of a joke at first. A very funny joke. 
But as soon as I found out what he was up to, I tried to stop. I... Did you? But he wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let you. I think you'd better go. I'll help you get away from this town if you want to. Oh, I want to more than anything in the whole wide world. But you can't help me. Because Booker will find out about it. And he'll find some excuse to put you in jail and... And give me a chance to escape and kill me when I try. Yes. Mr. Andergallis, that should get you far enough away from Booker. But he'll never find you. I can't. Wait, two men have been killed already. Booker's been able to get away with murder twice. He can't a third time. In fact, I know that he can't. Now you take that. I'm sorry I badgered you before. You pack your things. I'll be here tomorrow morning and I'll walk you to that stage. Someplace, Lila? Where is it? I don't know what you mean. The getaway money Cartwright gave you. Oh, no, please. I'll give you half of it. No chance. Two hundred? No. Two hundred and fifty. I'll need fifty for the stage. You got yourself a deal. Fifty. You won't tell Booker. You promise. Yeah. Yeah, I promise. Told you to be here at 5 o'clock. An hour late. You know something, Booker? You really locked horns with a big one this time. Yeah, who's that? Ben Cartwright. I looked him up in the files of the Gazette. I didn't know you could read. Well, go ahead and make jokes. But there's nobody in Nevada bigger than Ben Cartwright. He can have the whole state right down on top of you. You sound scared. No. No, I'm not scared, Booker. I'm just smart. I know when it's time to move on. Orrin, why don't you go over to the saloon and get drunk, put it on my bill? I'll take care of Cartwright. Then you'll do it alone, Booker. You haven't said it all yet. Come on, what's the rest of it? Cartwright's got Lila. You're lying. I'm not lying. I did what you told me. I followed him. It took him a while to find her, but he found her. She ain't going no place. Booker. Ben Cartwright's gonna walk her to the stage in the morning. And if you try to stop him, he'll have the attorney general here. Good luck. Oh, that five I borrowed? Take it out of my pay and what's left, send it to the Fargo Hotel in Sacramento. I've seen Ben Cartwright duck into an alley. It's good enough. Hank? Well, I've seen someone running. I didn't get a very good look at him. It, it might have been Ben Cartwright. It was Ben Cartwright. I guess it was. Sheriff. 
Sheriff Booker. What can I do for you? I want to see your gun. Well, can you tell me why? When I'm ready. Just give me your gun. Fresh cleaned. But it took me ten minutes to find you. Yeah, in ten minutes, you could have cleaned it twice. You're under arrest. Well, on what charge? First degree murder. You shot and killed Deputy Harn. <laughs> when was I supposed to have done that? I don't try to be funny, Mr. Cartwright. You know when. I was crossing the street when I heard a shot. I saw you run out of my office. I went straight into the office. Nobody there but Harn. Shot in the back. You sure it was me that you saw? Positive. I wasn't the only one that saw you. I got two other witnesses right here. Uh, I seen you, Cartwright. Plain as plain. I'll swear to that. I suppose you saw me, too. I seen you. Well, it looks like I'm going to need a good lawyer, doesn't it? You're going to need more than that. I got to Horn while he was still alive. With his last breath, he said you shot him. You have a dying man's last statement and three eyewitnesses. I don't suppose it'd do any good for me to say that I didn't do this, that I'm not guilty. Not a bit. Let's go. You mind if I uh, get my coat? Samuels. Uh, Councilman, Mr. Purdy. Mr. Slatter. Mr. Elmont. And of course, you know, Miss Holden. What are they doing here? We've been talking about you, Sheriff. These gentlemen know all about you. But I had to explain to them why you killed those two men you had locked up in your jail. Because they tried to help Miss Holden get away from this town and from you. I told them that I would help her get away. And because of that, you'd come after me and arrest me. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow morning. For something I didn't do. You're lying. He's just trying to get out of the murder of Horn. Why, well, I got witnesses. Of course you have. That was a surprise. You're killing your deputy to get at me. But I was expecting something. And that's why we've been here, together, for the past two hours, waiting for you. Too. Same as me. Ms. Holden has agreed to turn state's evidence. In appreciation, the court will undoubtedly treat her with leniency. How about me? Uh, I could use her uh, leniency. Take it easy, we'll see you around, yeah?
leave now? Yeah, yeah. All ready to move out. You need another hand, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, I guess we could use another hand. Stone booze on that chestnut. We'll keep an eye on that hammerhead. He's mean. This time in the morning, we're all mean. You got me. You say that again. I told you to be careful. We're gonna have to get you to a doctor. There's one in Angeles. It's not too far out of the way. Come on. Mining company. Company store with armed guards keeping the customers away. What's going on? I don't know. It's none of our concern. That's uh, Doc's office over there. Company orders, Mr. Reagan. I'm sorry. Well, so am I, Harvey. Hey, Steve! Steve Reagan, what's the matter? I can't remember old friend. Oh, just surprised. Good to see you, Joe. How you doing? Fine, fine. What are you doing in town? Just passing through. You got time? Come on out and see Stephanie. I wish I could, but I can't. I got a whole string of horses I got to get to the ranch. Next time for sure. Hey, Candy. Hey, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Steve Reagan. Howdy. Look for us before he married the best-looking girl in Angeles. Well, I can't say I blame you. What happened to your hand? Oh, nothing much. Horse stepped on it. Horse stepped on it? Hey, we'll be over in a saloon having a beer. How's that sound? Great. Come on. Out here. Potter shed, Emmett. Somebody broke into it last night. Here's I can tell, 10, 15 cases of dynamite are gone. What happened to the guard? Slugged and tied up. 15 cases of dynamite? Better take some men and search the mine. I'll check in what's missing. Even five cases of dynamite planted in one of those side tunnels will bring down all the lower levels. You want that mine searched? You get somebody else? No, 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 wait, wait. Maybe we won't have to do it. Put a couple of extra men on guard at the entrance. We'll decide what to do when we know exactly how much is missing. It's hard to believe it's, it's been a year since I was the best man at your wedding. 
I don't know how many times I've ridden by Angela's and I meant to stop. Ah, I know how it is, Joe. Get busy. Stephanie's missed you, too. Yeah, how's she doing? Fine. Okay. Have another beer. No, no, no. I never sponge more, more than one drink off a friend. It's a habit. You're broke, huh? Like the rest of the miners here in Angeles, the mines closed down and the company store just shut off all credit. Well, what's the problem? The man asking for higher wages or what? No, the mine ain't safe, especially the lower levels. No, we just, we just walked out. Ah, don't you worry about that. We'll make out all right, Joe. Well, look, why don't you come back and work for us on the Ponderosa? I never, never figured you for much of a miner anyway. Yeah, me neither, but you, you get caught up in things. I'm, no, I'm committed here now. How do you mean committed? I'm the one that talked the miners into walking out. And they're depending on me. Well, thanks for the beer, Joe. Maybe next time, my treat. Wait a minute. There, there must be something I can do to help, Steve. No. Now, like I said, we'll make out all right. Hey, how's the hand? Well, old buddy, looks like you're going to have to do all the work going back to the ranch. Not that bad, huh? Steve, how about giving us some help? We could use it. be a day's wages. There's a miners' meeting here tonight. I'd have to be back for that. I'd be back in plenty of time. What do you say? All right. Good enough. Let's go. Hey, Steve. We've got to talk to you. Well, later, Uncle Pat. I'm giving Joe here a hand with his horses. Uncle Pat, you remember Joe Kite, right? Mr. Wojcik? Okay, how you doing? I'll see you in a minute, Joe. Right. Good to see you again. Joe got right. What about the meeting tonight? I'll be there. Well, you better be. You know, we got decisions to make. Just a minute. I'll ride this one. You take my horse. It'll be rough string we picked up. I can still ride anything you can, Joe. Okay, suit yourself. You're gonna listen to me when I tell you what horse to get on you, all right? Hey, Steve? Steve? He's dead. Steve, be surprised to see you. I told him you'd come. I told him. I'll just make a cake. You can't stay, can't you? I mean, I'll just make a little coffee. Stephanie, you please. Have... Joe, what's wrong? Stephanie, Steve's dead. No, I don't believe that. drive some horses to the ranch. He was only going to work a couple of hours.
he had come here, talk Steve into getting on that horse. Ten cases of dynamite, a box of caps, 50, maybe 100 feet of fuse. More than enough to blow the mine closed. We better find it. I don't care if we have to rip out every board in every miner's house. We're going to find that dynamite. Let's go. Yeah. Make your search, but don't look too hard. Think about it. It could work out just fine for us. outside the street. I want to go see Steve. Are you sure you're up to it? You're right. Search the house. Private house. You can't break in here like this. Ooh. Joseph Cartwright. These men are under my orders, Mr. Cartwright. Nothing here concerns you. I suggest you go back to the Ponderosa where you belong. And I suggest you get out of here. I'm sorry, Mrs. Reagan. But we have to search your house. For what? Ten cases of dynamite stolen from the company warehouse. There's no dynamite here. Your husband, Mrs. Reagan, he My knows. My husband is dead. Now get your men out of this house. Go on, Garrett. I'm sorry to hear about this, Mrs. Reagan. Your husband and I had our differences, but... We don't often get to see Cartwrights in Angeles. Say hello to your father for me when you get back. I would advise you to leave soon. It's a bad bump, but he'll be all right. I want to go see Steve. Now, will you take him home, Joe? I'll take care of him. Come on, Mr. Wojcik. Come on. All right, folks, move along. Don't block the streets. Move along now. And those voices. Those are my horses, mister. Leave them alone. Leave them alone! I said turn them loose. You turn those horses loose, it's gonna take two days to round them up. You figure to do that? Put that gun away. Sure, as soon as he gets away from that horse. I want this street cleared. I got enough trouble handling these miners. I don't want strangers getting in my way, getting hurt. I'll give you 20 minutes to get out of Angeles. Is there anything else I can do? Stephanie. You must take care of her now. I have mouths on my own to feet. I'll do what I can. Mr. 
Mr. Horchek, what's going on here? What are the men afraid of? Is it the dynamite that Hudson said was stolen? Is that it? I don't know anything about dynamite. Have it your own way. The mine. That is what we are afraid of. It is not safe. Bad timber. Shoring no good. Steve knew. He tried to talk to Mr. Hudson. Someday soon, the tunnels will go. I've been a miner all my life. My father in Poland. That is all I know. It is hard work. It is a good job. Maybe someday it'll be better for our sons. Hey, Dad, I... Hey, what's Cartwright doing here? He wants to help. Why don't you just go on back to your big ranch and leave us alone? Okay. All right, all right, Thad, just hold it. Thanks for helping me, Mr. Cartwright. Thanks. Anna, leave us. They searched your house. Yeah. But they didn't find any dynamite. They can tear down every house in Angeles, but they won't find it. Give it back to them, Kate. No, Thad, no. Well, they got the guns, but we got the dynamite. And they're not getting us back into that mine to die like rats. We'll blow it up first. I can't leave yet. We've been ordered out of town. What do you mean, ordered? By whom? Deputy Sheriff. That figures I got the same message myself. Brady's gonna have some trouble with the miners, he said, once us out of the way. Yeah, well, that's too bad. I can't leave now. Never even planned to stay in Angeles. He just got caught up in things. Got involved. I'm pregnant, Joe. Steve talked about you so much. I hoped you'd come by. So did I. I hoped you'd come by and see us. God help me, Joe. I hate you for coming to Angeles now.
Joseph, I'll say it again. What happened to Steve was an accident. It could have happened to anybody. You're not responsible. Pa, there's a woman back in Angeles who thinks I am. And in a way, she's right. If I hadn't stopped in Angeles, Steve would be alive right now. The fact is, I did stop, and a friend is dead. His wife's a widow, and... I'm expecting a child. Yes. No accident or not, the least I, I can do is be around when she needs help. Joy. I just feel that I'd... Well, I'd like you not to go back to Angeles until the trouble there is settled. Well, I have to go back. Stephanie's gonna need help. Well, the other miners can't help her. They haven't been working because the mine isn't safe. Well, there's another thing that, that troubles me. What's that? Well, there's a... Stockholder in that mine. I get reports. I got one here dated about three months ago. Signed by an inspector of the Federal Bureau of Mines. Here. And you'll see that the Angeles mine is rated well above federal safety standards. Oh, I don't understand it. Yeah, but the miners aren't my problem. Stephanie is. Oh, well, Joe, I... I would just rather that you didn't go back there. Isn't, isn't there something I could do? What does she need? How can I help her? Pa, I have to help her. Yeah. All right. But you'll be real careful. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Angeles. You have a responsibility, too? Well, no, not exactly. I can't do any work around here for a while, and it seems like a nice day for a ride. I think you're going. Angeles. Well, do me a favor, go back to the ranch. I can't, I just quit. Uh, incidentally, I think you're a fool for going back to Angeles. Well, then how come you're going? Well, I'm just as responsible for Steve's death as you are. If that clumsy footed horse hadn't stepped on my hand, we wouldn't have gone to Angeles in the first place. Candy, I'd say that was a pretty lame excuse. It's about as good as yours. All right, let's go. I didn't count on this kind of trouble, Emmett. What kind of trouble did you count on, Mr. Polk? Oh, you know very well what I mean. Those miners out there, this sort of thing could lead to an investigation. You take care of your inspection reports, I'll worry about the miners. I don't know, Emmett. It's a little late to grow a conscience, Mr. Polk. However... You know I need the money. You always do. What does Mary need this time? You leave my wife out of this, Emmett. <laughs> Mr. Hudson. What is it? Oh, that's all right. There's some miners gathering in front of the store. Could you put a guard in the door? Two of them. Those miners are getting pretty desperate, Emmett. Not desperate. Hungry. They'll start eating again as soon as they go back to work. If they try to break into the store, stop them.
I told you I didn't like it. Shoot one of those miners and you'll have a dozen United States Marshals in Angeles. And I told you, stick to your inspection reports. I'll take care of the rest. I feel worse in bed. Come in. Let me get you some cake. Huh? No, no cake. Then I'll get you some coffee. Anna told me about the baby. Who will take care of you? How will you live? There is no work for women here. And I... I cannot help. You mustn't worry about me. I... I was thinking about you and Joe Gottfried. He's a rich man, Stephanie. And he feels responsible for what happened to Steve. If you want it... You could... It was a bad thing to say. I'm sorry. Please go. Do what you got to do. I'm going to be in the bar. Uh, stay out of trouble. Peaceful as a lamb. Ooh. Come in. I didn't expect to see you back in Angeles again. Dad told me that you were leaving. I am tomorrow. Why did you come back? I thought maybe I could help. Stephanie, we were friends. I told you, what happened to Steve wasn't your fault. Now, what more do you want? I want you to believe it. All right, I believe it. Now, if you're so anxious to help, why don't you help the miners? They need it more than I do. I told you to stay out of town. I decided to come back.
Hey, you want to try a man with two good hands, you go right ahead. No need. I made my point. Give me the gun. the doctor if I need him. You make it over to the hotel by yourself? Oh, yeah. All right. Where are you going? To a meeting. You go over there and get some rest. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, well, you're old man. Old man. That's what you are. You're tired old man. Willing to sell the rest of us out. What happened to you, Thad? You were with Steve when we walked out. You told us we'd win. How many marbles do you have to feed, Cape? Steve is dead. We can't hold out anymore. What else can we do? You know. You know what we can do. Blow up the mine. What good will that do? Who asked you in here? I did. He wants to help. Yeah, sure he does. Then Cartwright's little boy come all the way back to Angeles to help. What's the matter, Cartwright? You miss a meal tonight? Your old man turned you out of your nice soft bed? Cape. Oh, what's he doing here? He don't care nothing about us. His old man owns half the territory. Father owns a piece of this mine, too, don't he? Yeah, maybe Ben Cartwright sent you. It's your father's money you're interested in, ain't it? Cape, that's enough. You said you could help. How? All right, first of all, you sure the mine isn't safe? I'm sure. Well, I read a report from the Federal Bureau of Mines saying otherwise. Well, why don't you go down in one of them tunnels and find out? That's exactly what I intend to do. Sure, he'll go. Then we'll get ourselves another fake report. Well, you go ahead, Cartwright. I just hope you're down there when all the D-level comes down. Dynamite. Where is it? In the mine. Ready to blow it apart. It may seem that way to you, Mr. Cartwright, but I'd say you've been talking to the wrong people. You've yeah, been talking to the miners. That's exactly what I mean. They filled you with a lot of lies. Mr. Polk here is a qualified inspector from the Bureau of Mines. He completed the report your friend is reading just this morning. Safest mine in the world, according to this. So in that case, you can't object if we have a look around. The mine is closed, Mr. Cartwright, because of the strike. I can't take you down there. You either show it to me today or show it to my father tomorrow. That's up to you. Since you put it that way, since your father is a stockholder. Mr. Garrett? What do we need the sheriff for? These are troubled times in Angeles, Mr. Cartwright. We wouldn't want you to get hurt. Let's go.
That needn't concern us, Mr. Cartwright. If you were a miner, you'd know things are always shifting and moving about underground. It's something to do with the earth tides. Now, that timbering you're looking at, that's some of the oldest in the whole mine. Minor friends, Mr. Cartwright. He was about to set off that dynamite, bring the whole mountain down and kill us all. Yeah, because he knew what I just found out. That every timber in his mind is right. <laughs> we owe this one a vote of thanks. He just solved all our problems. place for weeks. And what do you tell them when they find us? They're not going to find you, unless they want to move a million tons of rock. That's why we hauled you a half mile further into the tunnel. Did you find some rope? That's a fuse. to have a cart ride staying in Angela. Fuse. Must be sitting 
safe in my office when the blast goes off. I'd laugh. Let's go. Kenny. Uh. Oh, here. Foggy, but here. Cave? Oh, he's still up. They're gonna blow up the mine. Well, let's get out of here. You got any matches? Matches? Why? They tied us up with fuse. Yeah, yeah. I think it's some of my best. It's always a pleasure to have one of our stockholders. Where's my visit. son, Joseph? I, I don't know exactly. I, I believe he went into the mine to make an inspection. Did he? Well, then we'll make an inspection, too. Now. Yes. Yes, of course. Garrett? trouble with the miners here lately, Mr. Cartwright. Almost anything can happen here these days. Is Joe in there? I tried to Get stop him. I... Get a lot of men! serious that he can't stand fire. It goes for you, too. That's it. You want to see me? 
Your father's a good man, Joe. Extending credit to the miners until they can work the mine again. And they'll be back to work real soon. But that's not why I wanted to see you. I want you to forgive me. I was so frightened. And all alone. I just had to blame someone. I understand. I'll be staying with Steve's folks in St. Louis, so... Maybe you'd come visit me sometime. Maybe you'd even be a godfather to Steve's baby. I know Steve would have liked that. So would I. sunshine left, but we ain't got that far to go nowhere. Ah, that sure hits a spot. Want another one? No, no, thank you. Say, I, uh, I never seen you around here before. Where are you from? Virginia City. My name's Horst Cartwright. Oh, Sam. Sam, happy to meet you. Uh, how long are you gonna be here? Oh, a week or ten days. I'm over here to look at some horses that a fellow named Carter's got. Oh, you've come to the right place. He's sitting right around the corner alone. Oh, thanks. Judge Carter? Yes, what can I do for you? My name's Horst Cartwright. I think you and my pa have been corresponding. Oh, of course. The horses. Sit down, Mr. Uh, Cartwright. I don't want to take up your time, but I did want to let you know I was in town. Well, we'll just uh, have a little drink, a little pleasure before oh, me. Oh, no, no, thank you, Mr. Carter. I ain't even got a hotel room yet. Hotel room? I wouldn't hear about it. I got plenty of place out of my house. Oh, I, I wouldn't want to impose on you. Hotel's fine. I would consider it an insult if you did not accept my hospitality. Then you got yourself a house guest. Uh, Sam, bring another glass. Just make a beer for me, Sam. Thank bring you. some beers. Another bottle of whiskey. By the light of the silver moon, yeah. Come on, again, we're coming on the light. Come on, the light. Come on, the light. We're coming right in the light. Oh, better not do that. Uh, I found a house and I can find the key. Hey, what did I tell you? Hmm? All right. I can get up by myself. Uh, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Stupid door I wasn't even locked. I'm going to bed. Sarah, this is Mr. Cartwright. How are you, ma'am? Uh, she'll show you to your room. I guess there's never a dull moment when you work with a fellow like Mr. Carter, huh? I don't work for him, Mr. Cartwright. I'm married to him. I'll get your room ready.
you sure I can't fix you something? Uh, some eggs or... No, no, thanks, ma'am. I, I don't care for nothing. Thank you. Miss Carter, I... I want to apologize for what happened last night. No need, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I think there is. Oh, well, let me give you some coffee. You see, ma'am, I... I reckon it's sort of my fault. I, I reckon I ordered just a few too many drinks, that's all. Some fellows can hold their liquor better than others. Don't make excuses for my husband, please. Last night was nothing new. If you hadn't have been with him, he wouldn't have come home at all. Oh, excuse me. The fact of the matter is that this is my broom, and I left it outside. Now, Timmy, if you and Sally can play nicely together, I'll let you use it. How's that? Thank you, Mom. Thank you. And I'll be careful that Timmy doesn't break it. Come back here! Come back! Come back! <laughs> it's hard to believe the things children manage to argue over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sure is. Uh, I think I'll take a stroll out and take a look at some of the stock. I'll call you when Josh gets up. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for the coffee, too. You're welcome. Gibbs? Now, don't tell me. Let me guess. Your name must be Timmy, and you must be Sally, huh? How did you know our names? Well, it's sort of magic. Well, we don't know magic, so you'll have to tell us your name. All right. My name is Hoss. Huh? I said my name is Hoss. That's a funny name. Well, it's not my real name. Why didn't you tell us your real name? Well, it's sort of a, a nickname. What's the nickname? Well, it's a name they give you besides your real one. Didn't they like your real name? <laughs> well, I, I reckon they liked it all right, but you see, a nickname is sort of a... Well, let me explain it to you this way. You see, when I was born, I was such a big young'un that they decided they'd call me Hoss, because I was as big as a horse, see? But you're not a horse. You're a people. Why didn't they call you a giant? That's a good question. I'll have to ask my pa. I wish I had one of those nicknames. I wish I had one of them, too. Well, ask you, Paul. He'll give you one. No. We better not. Why? Because our Pa's sick. He falls down and everything, and we're not supposed to bother him. Well, maybe one of these days he'll, he'll be better. If you gave us a nickname, then we'd have one. Oh, yes, would you? Why, well, all right. Let's see a minute. I know. Sally, I'll call you Princess, because you're so pretty. Oh, I like that. I don't want to be a prince. Oh, no, 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 no. I got a very special name for you. How's, uh... Little Hoss. Huh? Little Hoss, because I'm going to be big, but I'm not big yet. Now, how did you guess what I was going to say? Maybe it was magic. I'm sure it was. Come on, Sally, let's go tell Mom. <laughs> Morning. Well, you've seen some of the horses? What do you think? Well, I, I don't want to flatter you. I don't want that price going up. I don't do business that way. A little flattery will get you everywhere with me. Well, in that case, I'll tell you. Thus far, they're the finest looking bunch of animals I've ever seen in my life, bar none. Good, but that's just a sample. It'll take eight or ten days to round up all the animals I want you to see. Well, I got nothing but time. That's good. A man ought to take his time picking good horses. Oh, excuse me, uh, you want a drink? No, no, thank you. Thank you. Just a little hair from the dog, hmm? <laughs> Josh, I don't want to bother you if you're busy, but uh, the children are all ready. Ready? 
Ready for what? We had a picnic planned for today, you remember? What do you mean, I remember? You think that's all I've got to think about today? Picnic? I'm running a ranch. Well, yes, I know, Josh, but I just wondered if you could join us. Look, uh, if you do got plans, please go ahead with them. Don't mind me. I, I mean, I got nothing but time anyhow. It would make the children so happy. I told you I'm busy, Sarah. I have work in town. It's just like a woman, isn't it? Wants all the things money can buy, but can't understand why the husband has to work to get them. We'll have some of those other horses rounded up by tomorrow, and then we'll go out and take a look. Well, I can't let all that fried chicken go to waste. I took the liberty of hitching up her horses. Oh, that was kind of no, you, but... No, ma'am, not kind. You don't know me very well, but when you mention fried chicken and picnics around horse cart rides, you got to figure on taking him with you. I wonder what's keeping those children. Sally, to me, come on! Oh, is Hoss coming, Mommy? Yes, he is. Now, come on. Oh, good. Can we play games? You bet we can. Jump in. Here we go. All aboard. This is going to be fun, Mommy. <laughs> We'll have a ball. Hmm. <laughs> down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Rascals, you caught me. <laughs> I play one more. Timmy, you've been saying that all afternoon. You're going to wear Mr. Cartwright out. Hey, I'll tell you what, kids. Why don't you go find me a dragon? And then I'll help you catch it. But there's not such thing as a dragon. Why, sure there is. Haven't you ever seen a lizard? Yes, but lizards are little and dragons are big. Hmm, that's right, but they're just baby dragons, ain't they? Hey, that's right, Sally. Come on. Oh, man, I'm, I'm talking about it. I feel like I've been riding trail for a month. I can imagine. You've been at it all afternoon. Well, I, I didn't really want to quit. You see, I was winning. <laughs> Are you married, Mr. Cartwright? No, ma'am. I thought, I thought you might be. You have such a way with children. I thought you might have some of your own. No, no. I want to. My pa talks about how much fun it was raising us boys, watching us learn, and I'd like you to meet him sometime. I think you'd like him. Well, if he's anything like his son, I know that I would. I haven't seen the children that happy in a long time. You've made quite an impression. Well, leave it to a stranger to come along and spoil your youngins, right? Not always. The only other stranger they know is their father. I'm sorry. Guess I'm not much fun at picnics anymore. My husband wasn't always like this, you know. That was a silly thing to say, you know. How could you know? You're a stranger. Well, sometimes it's easier to talk to strangers. Josh was a fine man. He was so devoted to his children. He... He used to spoil them too much, but... But he loved them. His 
especially Michael. Michael? He was our oldest. Oh, what a beautiful boy. He'd steal your heart in a minute. He went everywhere with his father. Josh used to put him on the saddle in front of him, and they'd ride half the day. And then one morning, the horse stumbled. It was nobody's fault. But our son died that night. So did my husband. Now, you two are going to have to finish that milk and get to bed. You've been fooling for an hour, and it's late. Can't we stay up just a little longer? Maybe Daddy will be home. I told you, your father might have to work late tonight. Why does Daddy have to work late every night? Because he has to. Now, hurry up and finish. It's way past your bedtime. But I'm not tired. Me neither. I'll tell you what. You two hurry up and finish, and I'll tuck you in bed, and I'll give you a dream to dream. What's a dream to dream? Well, come along with me and I'll show you. Good night, Mommy. Good night, Good. Mommy. Run along. Now, are you ready for that dream I promised you? Oh, yeah. All right. Now, shut your eyes. Real tight. Now, here's your dream. We can fly, really fly, just like great big birds. And we fly way up high in the sky to one of those great big fluffy white clouds. And when we get there, we find out that it's made out of marshmallow. And we can eat it. It's like candy. Then when we eat all of it we want, then we fly over to the next big white fluffy cloud. And when we get there, we find out that it's a great big soft pillow. And we lay down on it. And we go fast, fast to sleep. I didn't think of that. Sure you do. Dear God, thank you for all the nice things we have. And please forgive us when we're bad because we don't mean it. And God, bless Mommy and Daddy. And please make Daddy feel good and not have to work so hard. Amen. Sally. Dear God, Please bless our friend Haas and have him stay with us a long time. Amen. Good night, Haas. Good night, Haas. We'll dream our dream now. Good night, sweethearts. Good night. That's, that's quite a pair you got there. <laughs> yes, they are. After the workout you gave them today, I think they'll sleep like long. Yeah, so will I. <laughs> I want to apologize again for my behavior today. I was feeling a little sorry for myself, I guess. I just wanted someone to feel sorry along with me. Well, I reckon we all feel sorry for ourselves at one time or another. The main thing is not to make a habit of it. No. Being happy ain't that easy. You, you really got to work at it hard. I sound like my Paul lecturing us boys. No, you're right. It was so easy to be happy for so long. I guess I just never learned to work at it. Well, it's never too late. I wish I could believe that. For my husband's sake. You could try. Yes, but after all these years, it's not that easy. Well, I, I didn't say it was going to be easy. 
I just said you could try. Well, it's getting late, and I got a lot of stock to look at tomorrow. I think I better turn in. Good night, ma'am. Boss. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Mighty fine looking bunch of animals. I'd like that big chestnut mare. And that big bay over there. Cut them out and put them with the rest. That's all for today. We'll have the North Herd in here in a couple of days. I think you'll like them even better. Well, you're gonna have to go some beat this bunch. I got some work to take care of in town, so we'll uh, see you bright and early day after tomorrow. Right, I'm sort of tuckered out to play games. But I'll tell you what, I'm not too tuckered out to go fishing. You got poles? You bet. They're out in the tool shed. Come on, Sally, let's go get them. <laughs> you really don't have to. No, I don't have to, but we do. I mean, if you're going to cook the fish, you're going to have to help catch them. Oh, but I... No argument. Remember, I'm a guest. Well, I don't know the slightest thing about fishing. Well... Sarah, them fish don't know nothing about that, do they? Come on, let's go. All right, but I warned you. <laughs> and so, the poor little servant boy grew up one day be the king. How'd you like that? That was great, huh? That boy sure was brave to kill two giants. Oh, boy, was he ever. Bet he was. Can we hear a story about a princess? A story. Children, it's late. You'd better be off to bed. Good night, kids. Good night. Good night, Hoss. Bye, buddy. Bye, sweetie. Well, does that do it for you? Yep. Sure does. You know, it's been tough decisions with all those good ones to choose from. Well, I'm real happy you're pleased. I'm gonna go along with the drovers and get them in the corral, and I'll see you back at the house a little later. All right, won't take long. <laughs> I didn't even hear you come in. I was so busy. How'd everything go today? Oh, fine. I just bought the finest bunch of horses I've ever seen in my life. Did Josh come back with you? No, he uh, he was going around the rest of them up and then come on home later. Good. That'll give me a chance to get everything ready. Hey, boy, that smells good. <laughs> Beef stew used to be Josh's favorite. Well, I'll guarantee it's mine. I just hope you made enough of it. <laughs> Don't worry, I did. Oh! I forgot to take the pie out of the oven. 
You all right? Oh, oh, it's not too bad. Oh, that was silly of me. Mrs. Carter, oh. those hands are entirely too lovely to be grabbing a hot oven handle. Oh, well, I haven't had a compliment like that in many a year, Mr. Cartwright. I speak only the truth, ma'am, only the truth. I'll get it. Excuse me, I'd better get dressed for dinner. Absolutely lovely. Thank you. It's all you're doing, you know. My? You told me to work at being happy. Well, a woman can't feel happy if she doesn't feel like a woman. Well, in that event, you should be terribly happy. I just hope Josh likes the way I look. Well, if he doesn't, he's blind. Get them on the trail. Remember what I told you before. You're welcome to use my drovers if you want. That's mighty generous of you, but once I send a telegraph to Paul, we'll have some fellows here in a day or two. Suit yourself. Josh, dinner's ready any time you want. I'm not hungry. I made some beef stew. I said I'm not hungry, Sarah. Josh. What is it, Sarah? Nothing. Well, I've got some uh, paperwork to finish up. You make yourself at home. blind. I just don't exist for him anymore. Oh, you know, it's funny. I was unhappy before you came here. But it was a different kind of unhappiness than I feel now. I guess I was just used to my life. It was the way things were, and that was that. Oh, I did so want him to look at me today. Sarah, don't, don't. Mommy? What's the matter, Mommy? Nothing, Timmy, nothing. Come on, you and Sally better have your supper. Good dream last night? Pretty good, why? I didn't. I couldn't sleep. Mommy cried all night. Yeah. Well, Timmy, all of us cry every once in a while, I reckon. My daddy never does, because he's a man. Yeah. Hey, how come you're not out playing with Sally? 
Oh, she's over at Patty Benson's house playing those silly girls' games. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hey, I got an idea. How come you and me don't go for a ride? You mean it? Well, little hoss, well, we build up here and stop a minute. Let this old pony get a little rest. You know, it's kind of tough on him, hauling two big fellows like you and me around all the time. He's nice. What's his name? Chubby. Is that his real name or his nickname? Well, he never did tell me his real name, so I just call him Chubby. My pa won't let me have a horse because of what happened to my brother. Well, maybe you will one of these days, Johnny, when, when you get a little bit bigger. My pa wouldn't let me have one either till I got big. You have a paw? Sure, I got a paw. Then he must really be big. Yeah. He's big, all right. Does your paw dream? Sure, everybody does. I don't mean just regular dreams. I mean happy dreams, like you gave us. Yeah, he, he has those dreams, too. Why? I was just wondering. I wish I could ride with you every day, Hoss. So do I, little buddy. So do I. Tomorrow we'll have some time. How many times have I told you never to get out of horse? How many times? Carter! Say out of this car, right? This is my son. I didn't mean anything, Hoss. I didn't. I know. I know that, son. Run on in the house with your mommy. Carter, you had no call to do that. I asked the boy to go for a ride with me. Now, if there's anything wrong with that, then it's my fault. You have no right to tell me how to discipline my son. I do until you start treating him like a son. Anybody can have a child, but that doesn't make him a father. Pack your things and get out of my house tonight. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. What do you mean, acting like that in front of the child? What do I mean? Oh, how dare you say that to me? How dare you? It never seemed to bother you to stagger around drunk in front of your children day in and day out, never talking to them, never being a father to them. Michael wasn't your only child, you know, or did you forget that? I told you never to mention my son's name! Your son? I was his mother! Or did you forget that, too? I carried that child around inside of me. When he died, part of me died, too. Well, if you feel so bad, why can't you understand the way I feel? Because I can't! Because you have two children who need a father and a wife who needs a husband. Oh, I, I, I just can't live with you anymore. Josh, I'm going to leave you. I'm taking the children and leaving. That's nonsense. You don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. I know exactly what I'm saying. We'll leave today. You can't do that. Yes, I can. Sarah, don't leave me. It won't work, Josh. I don't feel sorry for you anymore. It's been too long. I'm tired. A stranger came into this house and gave your children more love and attention than you've given them in four years. For the first time in their lives, they know what it's like to have a father. All right, you want to go? Go ahead. I just, I just don't want to hear about it anymore.
because of this, isn't he? I'm leaving because I have to. I've been looking for you. I thought I'd take a little walk before I left. So did I. I'm leaving, too. It won't work, Horst. You said I should try, and I did. But it just won't work. Are you sure? I'm sure. What about the children? It won't be easy for them, I know. But the longer I wait, the harder it will be for them. They need someone who loves them. What about you, Sarah? Kids? Hoss, can we come in? Sure, come in. We want to talk to you. All right. Mama said you were going to take us to town. Well, your mama asked me to take you in on the wagon, and I told her I would. Daddy's not going, is he, Hoss? No, honey, your, your daddy's not going. Do you love Mommy? Timmy, your mommy is a wonderful lady. And... You do love mommy, don't you? I love all of you. We love you too, Haas. That's why we know that you'll help us. You tell him. We didn't tell you the truth about Daddy. We didn't even tell God the truth, because we didn't want God to be mad at him. Our daddy's not sick. He drinks whiskey because he's sad. Mommy never told us, but we knew. He doesn't mean to be sad. He just forgot how to be happy. But you can help him, Hoss. Please give our daddy a dream to dream. Thank you, Hoss. Should be here by tomorrow. The horses are ready any time. Is that all you got to say? What else is there to say? You know, Cartwright, I've been sitting here for the past few hours trying to think of a way to stop my wife from leaving me. Everything from pleading with Sarah to fighting you, but neither one seems to make much sense. There's just no way to make someone love you. Have you really tried, Carter? 
No, I never tried. Not since Michael died. I suppose Sarah told you I killed my oldest son. No, she told me it was an accident. Yes, an accident, an accident. It could have happened to anyone, but it didn't happen to anyone. It happened to me. And the next... It seems like such a long time ago, but... This morning, it was only yesterday. You know, it's been a long time for Sarah, too. I know that. I'm not asking for forgiveness or sympathy, Cartwright. Well, good. Because you ain't gonna get none here. For the last four years, you ain't been a father. You ain't been nothing. Nothing! You got a wife and two kids that need a lot of loving to make up for what you ain't give them. These past four years have not been easy for me, either. Oh, come on, Carter. You ain't been suffering that guilt for yourself. You've been making Sarah and those kids suffer it. Let me tell you something. Destroying their love was no accident. Get out of here. You don't love Sarah. You're just afraid of being alone. Oh, I'm not afraid of being alone, Cartwright. I've worked very hard at that for these past four years. Yeah, and you're gonna keep working at it, aren't you? A man that loves his wife wouldn't sit back and watch another man take her away from him. You stay with that bottle. That's all you need, buddy. Sarah anymore. But before you leave, you gotta know I love her. Me and you're gonna find out just how much, ain't we? Josh. 
And I think that he'll give you those things again, Sarah. Do you remember me telling you that people had to work hard at being happy? I think Josh is ready for that work now. If only I could be sure. If I weren't sure, I'd never leave here without you. Give him a chance. Time to go, Hoss? No, little buddy. Your mommy decided to stay here. What do you mean? I mean, you're all gonna stay here and all be together. Oh, Hoss, you did it. We knew you could. You gave my daddy a dream. Yeah, that's right. I gave him a dream. Now, if I were you too, I'd run in the house and see him because I think he might have a kiss for you. Come on. We love you. I love you too, buddy. Run. 